take two. <clears throat> I am super excited to be joined today by LPGA Tour winner. What else? What else? What else? <laughs> what else? <laughs> Um, five times Holheim Cup team member. That is true. Um, top 20 player in the world. That is also true. It is also true. You know your um, stats. What's that, Silas? <laughs> what that? up, Ben? <laughs> you know, just chilling. We're here in Florida, Naples, Florida, for the final event of the year. Mm-hmm. So, I guess, first of all, how are you doing? I am doing great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Um, it is the final event of the year and, um, you know, just trying to go out with a bang and, you know, it's been a, a, a long, crazy up and down year for me and I'm just excited to, to finish on a good note and, and then to put the clubs away for a little bit. Yeah, so I have to check my notes on these. I got some <laughs> stats, but they're good. You're like the king of stats. Well, let's see if they're the correct. King of stats? I'm pretty sure. They are correct. <laughs> I'm not pretty sure. They are correct. So this season, two runner-ups in majors. Mm-hmm. Made your fifth Hawaiian Cup team, like we said. Mm-hmm. Back in top 20, you're currently 19th. Also, I was just checking. Since 2018, you have five <laughs> top eights in majors, including Ooh. three runner-ups, which to <laughs> me is just like... Uh, of course, you want to get across that finish line, but at the yeah, same time... we got to close the deal at some point. <laughs> but, but at the same time, it's, like, mind-blowing to me. Like, uh, you're just in the biggest events. So, yeah. I guess, first of all, while we're on that topic, like, what is it about majors? Like, do you know? Um, do, do I know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think when there's a lot of... There's a lot on the line when... I think those years are also, were also Solheim Cup years. Um, you know, that's that's a that's an event that's really important to me, and so um, you got to play well in majors to make the make those teams. And I think when the golf course gets tougher, um, I just get in the zone easier. Not easier, but like I'm just I'm just in it, and I manage to stay in it and contend and hit good shots. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to do that the whole year not mm -hmm. just you know majors but um the fact that i'm able to to compete at that level with so much on the line um you know i think it shows how how good i can fight and um yeah it's been pretty good yeah so it's interesting and and knowing you i know you for a few years now and i know how important solheim is to you mm -hmm. and to begin this year you were like a lock on the team <laughs> no i was way down there so when you're going into a season like this so you have a major championship events when you're playing i know like everyone out here you want to win mm -hmm. but how much of that solheim like making up ground on that trying to get yourself on that team so there's like two almost two events going on in your head at the same yeah. time yeah it's almost um it's almost like you have a big picture but then there's also like little steps you have to you have to go through um i think when I'm up against the ropes and like I have to really go to work and, and get it together, I somehow manage to do that. And um, I don't like doing doing that to myself, but it, it tends to happen. And I felt like this year I could I felt like I would bring a lot to the team. And but at the same time, I didn't want to rely on a captain's pick. I never have. Um, but luckily, it all went the way it was supposed to and made my fifth team um but yeah it's it's an emotional roller coaster you you know it we've talked about it and um i think it's just part of the process um yeah i started way out of the i wasn't even on the radar to begin the year and then started making my way into into it and then kind of made my stamp and um, made my way on the team. So just one more point on that because So being so far out of it. Is there any time? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> is there, no, I'm, <laughs> just I'm using your words. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. kidding. But being so far out of it at the beginning is there was there any part of you that's like I shouldn't even Try like what's the point in trying or uh, were you like more determined than ever to try to kick it in gear? And I was more determined than ever but at the same time like I even said at one point, if I don't, I thought to myself, if I don't make this team, this could be it. 
you know, and, but throughout the process and being, you know, talking with my team the whole year, I said, whatever happens, happens, you know, to, to make four teams is an accomplishment itself. And this would just be extra. And this, and if I don't make this team, like it doesn't define who I am. And when I finally got that process or that narrative in my head, that's when I started playing better golf, (laughs) which is so weird. Um, but yeah, luckily everything worked out and, uh, but yeah, there was a point where I'm just like, guys, this might not happen. And, but my whole team was like, don't say that. We're going to keep working. We know, we know what you're capable of. And I knew what I was capable of. So yeah, everything worked out. <laughs> it surely did. Mm-hmm. So when you look back on this year, it's not over yet. Right. But when you look back on this year, what moment kind of stands out to you and or what moment are you most proud of? Dang. <laughs> What moment was I most proud of? I think, well, there's two, obviously those two runner-up um, finishes at KPMG and AIG Women's Open. But for, I think the most proud moment was being able to be vulnerable and to talk about all the, all the lows that I was going through. And I feel like the general public just doesn't, didn't know or doesn't know that we're just like everyone else and I think just finally being able to to share that and to finally release all the weight that was on my shoulders for a long time I think that was probably one of the proudest moments and then uh, just kind of grinding it out mentally um, throughout all the majors and Solheim so I think that was probably the proudest moment yeah so oh, I'm promise. getting choked I, up I, I, <laughs> <laughs> just Excuse kidding me. I'm the emotional no, one but but it just, it reminded me that stretch this summer, you were trying hard to not, to like, to avoid, well, to get in a position to either be a captain's pick, hopefully mm-hmm. to avoid it. Mm-hmm. And you played more events in a row than you've ever played, correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that was a learning experience. And what a lot of people don't know is, you know, my last event was the AIG Women's Open and in, in, during the summer. And I was so mentally exhausted, like, I was considering, like you and I talked about it, I was considering not playing. It was just mentally exhausting. My back was hurting. I was missing home, but I put my big girl pants on and John did a fantastic job of keeping me present and confident. And um, we we came up with a, with a runner up finish. So that just shows how much fight I have and um, how tough I can, I can be, I guess. Yeah, I remember talking <laughs> to you like the week before and I was like, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna come home? Pl- <laughs> no, <laughs> but you're possibly not gonna play in, in the AIG Women's Open and then Can't you go it. on this unbelievable run. It's like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I got it. No, I'm straight, kidding. <laughs> straight into Solheim. <laughs> it no, fun. it's definitely a learning experience. And um, I, I knew I, I wanted to keep playing because I wanted every opportunity to, to get some points. But at the same time, I really have to analyze what I'm capable of physically and mentally. So maybe a six-week stretch may not happen again. I'll say, with that being said, <laughs> you got through it. You did great. Yeah. But it's going to happen again? No. If you can help it, I'm guessing. Probably no. not. Oh, if, if, if I have to, I have to. Yeah. But I'll probably be showing up pro-am days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to shift to a little bit few fun questions okay. here to wrap it up okay so first of all i know you like music go yeah. to karaoke song oh <laughs> i can't hold a tune to save my life That's uh okay. it has to be some backstreet boy song okay yeah okay or me and annie have us have do a duet um i don't want to know oh yeah maybe we can get a performance <laughs> this off season mm. make it happen mm. maybe not <laughs> Okay, well... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, do you have any exciting off-season plans? I have a few. Um, they're more like home remodeling. Very, uh, I'm adulting a lot this off-season. You are an adult. Um, yes. But I also want to establish like a brand, get some, get some merchandise out there. Um, kind of finally get a website going like I want I want the rest of the I want people to know like 
who I am outside the golf world, which is, it's only taken 10 years for me to figure that out. But, hey. um, you know, we're doing that. We're, I'm spending a lot of time with the family over the holidays and, um, yeah, just kind of digging into who Lizette is outside golf. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's time to do that. And after such a long year, a little down, like, mm-hmm. chiller activities, probably, probably good. Yeah. To yeah, refresh no. going into next year. For sure. Um, okay. For dinner guest. Ah, dang. Dead or alive, who do you want to join you at dinner? <laughs> you told me this yesterday and I still I gave don't you know. 24 hours, well, almost 24 hours advance notice. Oh, okay. I got one. Okay. My celebrity crush, Chris Evans. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> number two <laughs> is the, or- <laughs> the original Green Ranger, oh. Jason David Frank, a.k.a. Tommy Oliver. Uh, three, Selena. And number four. Wait, you need to specify because some people might not know which Selena. Selena. What do you mean? So the what? Selena Quintanilla? Correct. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. sorry, not Selena Gomez. No offense. Yes. Selena Quintanilla, the 90s icon. Um, number four. Dang. Freddie Mercury. Let's let's get him in there. Okay. Yeah. This is a good variety. Gotta practice of my British accent. <laughs> Which is terrible. Got it? You got nope. One? Nope. Okay. Now I kind of put that on camera. <laughs> no. Okay. Final question. Since this is the final event, <laughs> there's a $1.5 million first place paycheck. Mm-hmm. If you cash this in, mm-hmm. what's the first thing you'd buy? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? I mean, I do have an answer, but it's not like... <laughs> I was like, that laugh tells me you had an answer. <laughs> Um, oh my God. I'd buy a lot of Air Jordan 1s. <laughs> a lot? A lot. Like, I'd like redo a closet and then make it all for Air Jordan 1s. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Like, how many do you have already? I know you have a good collection. Uh, I have about 12. 12? That's not a lot. But I just no, started but... collecting them like a year ago. Or yeah. a year and a half ago. Well, $1.5 million can get you a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. We had to build a closet for it. Yeah, or a house. Just build a guest house for your Jordans. Ooh, I could do that. A whole Jordan yeah. thing. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, Lisette. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. You're and best so of, welcome, Ben. <laughs> best of luck this week. <laughs> Thanks.